This project is an opportunity to take the Raspberry Pi full stack application to the next level. In this course, you'll upgrade the hardware and software of the application. In this lecture, I'll talk about the following. First, about the learning objectives of the upgrade. Second, I'll talk about the hardware and software specifications and requirements. And third, I'll talk about the organization of this course. Let's begin. So, what will you learn in this course? Let's break the learning objectives into the soft and hard knowledge and skills that you'll gain. With soft knowledge and skills, I mean the ability to analyze and plan large projects. In such projects, you must spend time and effort to understand both the big picture as well as the implementation details. You must consider the project's overall technical objectives, how the end user will interact with the application and the implementation constraints and trade-offs. Those constraints and trade-offs are particularly complicated because they are informed by numerous inputs, such as the project's technical requirements, technical limitations and conflicts, your current skill level, and your available resources, such as time and budget. In this project, you'll have the opportunity to work on your maker soft skills on an unusual project. Typically, project courses start with a new project from scratch. You build the project from the bottom up. However, in this project, you'll be working on an existing project. Rather than starting from a blank slate, you must evaluate what you already have and decide what to keep what to throw out and what to change. In this course, even though I've made these decisions as part of the course design, you witness my decision-making process and to a certain extent participate in the development process. You'll gain the most by following me in the actual implementation of your version of the upgraded Raspberry Pi full stack application, where you will inevitably have to struggle with and overcome unexpected bumps along the road. With hard knowledge and skills, I mean the ability to implement a large, non-trivial solution or project. In this course, you'll improve your ability to build a full-stack application based on the Raspberry Pi, the ESP32, and a combination of hardware and software tools and technologies. If you have completed the original Raspberry Pi full-stack, you already have skills in technologies such as the Python programming language, the NGINX and UWSGI web servers, sensors such as a DH222, and radio frequency communication modules such as the NRF24. You also have experience using the command line and related tools to download files, compile executables from the source, edit source code, and control services. In the Raspberry Pi full stack upgrade course, you'll build on those hard skills and add new ones. Most notable of those new skills are the ability to use the BME280 sensor, the HC12 transceiver, and the SD1306 or LED display in your Raspberry Pi and ESP32 projects. You'll also gain new skills in maintaining, modifying, and extending a full-stack application, an essential skill often overlooked in technical and technology education. Let's take a quick look at this course's hardware specifications and requirements. The overall hardware configuration is inherited from the original project. There's a Raspberry Pi that acts as the application host and the local node for the system. In this course, I've decided to use a Raspberry Pi 02W because of its small size and low cost, while it packs more than enough power for our needs. However, you can use any Raspberry Pi with a Model B header. There's an ESP32 for the remote node. There's nothing special about the ESP32 in this project. You can use any Arduino compatible board, even an Arduino Uno, as I did in the original course. I chose the ESP32 because I have many of these boards in my drawers, and it's small enough as to not crowd too much my desk. In this course, I'm programming the ESP32 with the Arduino IDE version 2. 
In this project, the remote and local nodes share the same sensor and RF communication modules, a BME280 and a HC12. These devices replace the original DHC22 and NRF24 from the original application. I'll discuss the details of the thinking behind these replacements later in the course. I have also introduced a new hardware component in the local node, an OLED display. Again, I'll discuss the details later in this course, but in a nutshell, this display provides a way to quickly get information on the status of the application without the user having to go to the command line or browser. If you already have your version of the original Raspberry Pi full stack application working, you only need to acquire the new BME280 sensor, a HC12 transceiver and the OLED display. Please see the following lecture for details on the hardware. In terms of software, in this upgrade project, we'll use the same collection of technologies as you can see in this list. The organization of the software is also unchanged. The changes we'll introduce to the software are concentrated in the Python application files and configuration files. These changes reflect the use of the new hardware and take advantage of the new capabilities. For example, New code extracts environment data from the BME280 and shows it on the OLED. There's new code for the HC12 that replaces the code that drives the NRF24 modules originally. There's also new code to display the new information on the web interface and work with the more recent versions of Plotly. Here's how I've organized the course. The course has nine sections that take you through the five learning and implementation steps. The first step, that is in section two, is where you'll get comfortable with the Raspberry Pi and the ESP32. You'll take the time to set up the operating system on the Raspberry Pi so that it's ready to host the application. There's only little to do on the ESP32 side other than making sure that it works with the Arduino IDE version two. The second step, sections three, four, and five, is where you learn how to use the new hardware with the Raspberry Pi and the ESP32. You'll wire up the modules and use test scripts and sketches to learn how to use each module independently and with each board. In the third step, section six, you assemble the hardware for the full stack application. At the end of this section, you'll have a breadboard prototype based on the Raspberry Pi 02W and another breadboard prototype based on the ESP32. In the fourth step, sections seven and eight, you'll restore the original application on the new hardware. By the end of this section, the restored application will have the same functionality as the original. This is where you'll implement the communication between the nodes using the new RF transceiver and log temperature and humidity from the BME280 sensor. In the fifth and final step, section nine, you'll add new functionality and upgrade existing functionality to take full advantage of the new hardware. This is where you implement the OLED screen functionality and log the barometric pressure from the environment sensor. You'll also upgrade Plotly to the latest available version of its Python module and upgrade the application web interface. And with this, I hope that you now have a clear view of what's up ahead. Please don't forget to watch the next few lectures in this section so that you get more information about the required hardware. There's also one lecture where I give you a preview of the final upgraded full stack application so that you know what you're aiming for during this course.